BYU Cougar baseball is on the air as the Batcats get ready to take the field. Rockets one deep left field. Left fielder looks up. That is a grand slam home run. This is BYU baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now to get you ready for Cougar baseball, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. And Cougar baseball fans, welcome inside Larry H. Miller Field on the BYU campus as tonight the BYU Cougars brave the elements as they get back into conference play with the Pepperdine Waves rolling into Provo. I'm your play-by-play commentator, Greg Rubel. With me is BYU Baseball Director of Operations, Tuckett Slade. And Tuckett, uh, kind of a weird week. The calendar says spring, the winter saying weather, uh, the weather saying winter. And uh, Tuesday's game with Utah was uh, rained out as a result. We've seen snow since then. But as, uh, as long as things stay dry here tonight, we're going to play ball. Uh, going to be chilly, yes. And the visitors will wish they were back in Malibu at times tonight, I think. But it's a, it's a crucial conference series, of course, Tuck. And uh, the Waves looking to stay in the top tier. And BYU hoping to create some separation. Yeah, absolutely. It's an absolutely huge series. The Waves last year won the outright conference championship last year. They beat us two or three times at their place. We're coming off of a series loss against San Diego. Had a really great game on Saturday to kind of get some momentum back. And this is a huge one because they're one game behind us. It's a huge series. First pitch coming right up, so time for 90 seconds with the skipper. My pregame conversation with head coach Mike Littlewood, who talks about how he and his team have handled this uh, wild weather week with a big WCC weekend in the works. Yeah, baseball is one of those men- mental games, not just on the field, but uh, Tuesday was a rough day just worrying about the weather. It causes a lot of stress and anxiety because that decision's up to me until game time. So to have Utah come down, and it, it was kind of a frustrating day when, when it rains, rain really started at 530. But, yeah, you just have to – I think as baseball players, we have short memories, and uh, we just put that behind us. Now we get going with this, and this is this is important. You know, this is the most important thing of the week. and. Especially against Pepperdine, one of the top four teams in the, in the league. Um, I'm, I'm sure they're going to finish there. So really important to get off to a good start tonight. Really tight right now. There's a game gap between first and second, another game gap between second and a clump of teams in fourth right now, including Pep. Yeah, it just shows the parity in our league. Um, I think there's really only one team that's, that's struggling, Santa Clara. Pacific's beating some teams, and Portland's beating some teams, and um, then everybody else is really beating each other up. So I, there's – there's probably a legitimate six, seven teams that could not only make the tournament but win this league. They got a couple wins against Santa Clara on the weekend. They kind of had to grind to get the two. Yeah, they really did. I mean, they they probably should have lost that last game. I mean, uh, two outs and uh, men on second base. Pepperdine had in the bottom of the uh, the ninth. They were down one. And interesting play. The they infielder threw it to first base, and they called him safe at first, but the runner kept running from second base to tie the game, and then they end up winning it on a walk-off. So – yeah, they were really close to losing two out of three. Um, but, it, it, again, it just shows from top to bottom this league's really, really tough. Going to go with Jordan in your regular weekend rotation tonight, right? Yeah, going go with Woody tonight. He's had a couple rough outings uh, for him. Uh, the, you know, he sets the bar pretty high. And down in San Diego last week, he, he left a few too many pitches over the middle and got hurt that way. And I know he's just chomping at the bit to, to get back on the mound today. And then tomorrow, Easton Walker and then Justin Sterner on Saturday. All right, Mike, thanks for the preview. We'll talk to you post game. All right, thanks, Greg. That was BYU Baseball Head Coach Mike Littlewood. For lineups and the first pitch, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. 
All right, a chilly Thursday evening here at uh, Miller Park, Larry H. Miller Field in Provo, Utah. Jordan Wood on the hill for BYU. The battery will be Wood and Noah Hill. Pepperdine will send to the plate here in the top of the first. Lead off at number 16, Wyatt Young, playing second base. Hitting second, number three, Quincy McAfee, the shortstop. Hitting third, number five, Brant Belt, the DH, and clean up here in the first inning. And into the second, should we get there? Number 38, Matthew Canfer, the right fielder. And stepping to the dish is Wyatt Young, hitting 301 on the year. Young, left handed hitter, will face Wood, the right handed pitcher. We're about to get underway here in Provo. Jordan Wood on the year, 4 and 1 with a 3.99 ERA. Looking to shock off, uh, sh- shake off Tuck at a rough outing last weekend in San Diego. First pitch delivered in for a strike. Yeah, he really just didn't have command at all last week and really got shelled. Gave up 11 earned runs, which is just not Jordan Wood type outing. Gave up seven earned runs in his first six starts combined, then 11 in that one start last weekend. The 0 1 inside for a ball or 1 and 1 for the first hitter of the game. Wyatt Young leads the waves in hits. But could do a little more with his on base percentage. He's. Usually getting on base by way of hits, and he drills a hit in the left center field to get this game underway. So Young is aboard. First batter reaches for the waves. Yeah, got a fastball elevated there, 92 miles an hour, and just hit it right back up the middle, a little bit over the shortstop's head for a leadoff single. Good start for the waves. Quincy McAfee now. Right-handed hitter facing Wood. McAfee number three hitting 340 on the year. The top three in hits. Young ahead of him. Also Matthew Canfer hits cleanup. Pitching out of the stretch. Wood delivers outside. No he'll collects it as it bounded away from him briefly. 1-0 to the second hitter of the game. Quincy McAfee. Starting shortstop for the Waves. And one thing the Waves are not afraid to do, Greg, is they're a, they'll hit and run, they'll bunt, they'll drag bunt, sack bunt. They'll do a lot of things to create pressure and put pressure on the defense. Wyatt Young taking his lead off the first has attempted four stolen bases and has stolen three. Wood kicks and fires high for 2-0. and oh. First hitter aboard here in the top of the first. Austin Deming tonight's first baseman for the Cougs. Give you the rest of the defensive alignment here momentarily. As Quincy Mack fouls that, Jordan Wood offering off. Goes to 2-1, and one, BYU with Deming at first, Brian Sue at second, Jackson Klopp at short, uh, Casey Jacobson at the opposite corner at third base. Outfield left to right, Nyberg, McIntyre, and Hale. As mentioned, Noah Hill behind the plate. Rock Hale, the only player to start every game at the same position for BYU this year. He's the mainstay out there. The one and only. Jordan Wood, 2-1 delivery. We'll go back to first, and diving back ahead of the throw is Wyatt Young. Sweep by Deming, and back safely is Young. 2-1 forthcoming to Quincy McAfee. Holds the bat off his right shoulder. And waits for Woods. 2-1 2-1 pitch. Driven to left field. A bit of a stumble and a drop. As Hobbs and Iberg didn't handle it cleanly. Heading to third and sliding it ahead of the throw, which gets away. And the third baseman, Jacobson, backed up well by Wood. It puts runners at second and third. A little stumble by Hobbs and Iberg. Then it seemed to track it down and then ended up dropping it at his body. Yeah, it's a tough time of day out there in left field with the sun, the way that it, 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 it shines up over the field. You could tell Hobbs didn't really see that off the bat and actually ends up hitting him, which uh, you don't see that too often in the outfield as a ball hitting a player because I think he completely lost it. Switch hitting designated hitter, Brant Belk now with second and third and none out here. E7, the error to Hobbs and Iberg making a second start of the year. Both starts coming in left field and both coming in the last week. So BYU in a uh, spot of trouble here to get this one underway. Off-speed delivery is laced to right center field and over the wall for a three-run home run. Brant Belk, the DH, 
Makes it 3 nothing Waves, and the Cougars yet to record an out here in the top of the first. Yeah, and that's how they want to start. And, and Brant Bill, he just brought, finally getting in the lineup healthy. He's got power to right center. And today, with the way the batting practice was going, the juice is the right center with the way that, that wind is going, and, and he hits that ball out of here. Second home run of the season for Brant Belk, whose dad was once coached by Mike Littlewood in pro ball down in St. George. Interesting story there. Kind of a small world in baseball. So it's still not out. Fourth batter to the plate here in the top of the first. Cleanup hitter Matthew Canfer, number 38, the starting right fielder. As Wood delivers a ball, 1-0, and 3 nothing waves on two hits, including a three-run shot to right center from Brant Belk. Yeah, definitely a tough way to start the game. That's over for a strike one and one to Canfer. But if you're Wood here, you just have to minimize this and get three quick outs and get your team back in on offense and see if they can come and answer for this. And that's ripped into left field. Beyond the outstretched arm of Casey Jacobson, Hobbs and Iber collects. They cut it off and keep Canfer to a sharply hit single. So three hits, three runs, and still none out here yeah, at the top of the first. And even the air was hit hard. You know, he's not missing too many barrels right now. Every ball that's been put in play has been hit hard. So a single, single with an error, three-run home run, and a single. The first four hitters all reaching safely, and the Waves a 3 nothing lead here in the top of the first. Lead off of first taken by Canfer as that's piped in for a strike by Jordan Wood. Billy Cook starting left fielder, hitting 300 on the year, fifth hitter of this inning, and BYU still without a single out in the top of the first. Three nothing waves. And he's been their big power guy this year. He's got five home runs on the year and had the big walk off home run in the finale on Saturday against Santa Clara. But goes back to Deming at first and diving back ahead of the throw again is Canfer. So Cook looks at an 0 1 here in the top of the first, waves three and BYU zero. Waves have scored five or fewer in five of their last six games, but they're looking to change that particular trend here with a strong start here at Miller Park. One and one now. As Billy Cook looks down to his third base coach. Gets a sign and steps in. Righty-righty matchup here. 19 RBIs on the season for Cook. Waggles that bat off his right shoulder and drives it foul down the third baseline one and two game we called together last month featuring Jordan Wood on the hill saw Jordan get ahead of a lot of hitters that night and uh, not the same start to this game for either Wood or the Cougs yeah the waves are being really aggressive early in the count and they're getting that fastball and they're doing a really good job of putting good swings on it Wood's been out of the stretch most of this inning. Three nothing waves on three hits, including a three run home run. Swing and nubbed down the third base line to the third base coach. He'll collect and throw into the BYU dugout. Stays one and two. Jordan Wood to Billy Cook. Billy Cook, the fifth batter of this inning, and BYU still at none out. And Billy Cook's riding a current eight game hit streak. And has reached base safely in his last 10 overall. Jackson Clough can do that better. He's reached safely in all 30 games this year for BYU. Cook awaits the 1-2. and two. It's upstairs, 2-2. Two and two. Well, Wood really needs to keep the ball down right here, and he's looking for a double play ball to really just kind of capture a little bit of momentum back. Billy Cook is grounded into one double play on the year. Two and two now coming from Jordan Wood. Three nothing waves here, top one. A chilly night in Provo. And that's ripped, and there's the double play ball collected by the shortstop to Sue and over to Deming. Got two. Yeah, big Well time. done by Jackson Clough, and that is the double play you're looking for, and two out quickly here after a three nothing spurt to start for the waves. Yeah, nice play by Jackson. That ball's hit well up the middle. Has to kind of leave his feet to make that play. Good flip, easy throw by Sue, and that's a big double play here in the first. So Jackson Clough starts that twin killing. Fielding at a shade over 96% on the year is Clough, a versatile infielder. Now left-handed hitting Corey Wills, the starting center fielder. And that's swung on and fouled out of play left down the 
third baseline. And 0 1 now from Jordan Wood. By the way, that uh, fielding chance that Sue turned for that double play is his 200th fielding chance of the year without a single error. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. That's high and outside. One and one with two gone here in the top of the first. Pepperdine three and BYU no score. Double play helping the complexion considerably here in the last few minutes. Yeah. Again upstairs. Two and one now from Wood. Corey Wills, the third left-handed hitter of this first inning. Yeah, it's great to be a lefty today because the wind's pushing balls to right center. Two and two now with two gone. See if Jordan can get out of this with no more damage done here. We're in the top of the first. And Pepperdine striking with a three-run home run. They put together four straight hits to open this game, and there's another one driven deep and right and gone again. Well, Tuckett, you said it's pushing that way, and that's two pushed out of the park here in the top of the first. Solo shot for Corey Wills and a 4 nothing Pepperdine lead. Yeah, that's why I hate these wind-type games and the wind's blown out because a pop fly, now I think that ball still would have left, but that ball was over the trees in right center, and that just shows you how much the ball gets pushed when it gets up in the air. So second home run of the top of the first for Pepperdine. Three-run shot from Belk. Solo blast from Wills. Four-nothing waves. Two gone. And Jordan Wood now facing Aron Modlin. Seventh hitter of the inning. Starting third baseman for the waves. Modlin shooting, uh, hitting 267 on the year. Jordan now takes his full wind up and catches the outside corner away from Modlin for a strike. One and one. Two gone here in the top of the first. I tell you what, this is a Pepperdine team that's happy to be out of, the, out of Malibu right now as far as hitting goes because the way that their field is with that ocean breeze coming in, it's really, really hard to hit for power at that park. You have to hit line drives and balls on the ground. But now they're in a little bit of altitude, some wind, and they're dropping and driving, and they're really, really putting some good swings right now. Wood comes inside and gets Modlin swinging the one and two and swinging for the strikeout. Outside that time, inside out goes Jordan Wood and gets Modlin swinging at the last two to get out of the inning, but some damage done. Four runs worth of damage for the Pepperdine Waves. Four runs on four hits, a one BYU error, and Pepperdine takes the 4 nothing lead into the bottom of the first. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU fans, you can enjoy a free checking account that can earn big interest with the My Rate checking account from Bank of American Fork. Bottom of the first, Pepperdine already up 4 nothing. The Waves 9-3 and three this year when scoring in the first inning, and they scored four in the top half of the inning. Brian Sue, Noah Hill, and Brock Hale, 1, 2, and 3 here in the bottom of the first. Hitting cleanup tonight is Jackson Clough. We'll see if they get to Jackson stepping in against starter... Christian Stoutland is Brian Sue. And the right-hander Stoutland starts things off with a strike. 0-1 to Sue. Stoutland has as many saves as starts this year. Just a little bit of everything for Coach Hurt and Steiner. And his last outing was a gem. Sue laces it to center field, not handled cleanly. Bobble by the center fielder, and Sue will reach on the error. That's E8. Ran in on it and just... Uh, squirted out of his glove, much as Nyberg had a ball, appeared to be handled, and then dropped in the top of the first for BYU. Yeah, hit really hard at him. He comes in, has a great route to it. It looks like the last second he looked away from it, and it it just drops right out of his glove. You don't see that very often at this level. So Corey Wills with the mishandle, and so we've seen outfielder errors here in the first inning, one for BYU and now one for Pepperdine. And with Sue on first, stepping in is Noah Hill, hitting 356 on the year as Hill. Well, Greg, you're tracing four runs. You just try to find a way to sneak back in this game. You don't need them all back right now. Just sneak it back and try to get an answer here and at least get a run here in the, in the bottom half. So Sue takes his lead. Stoutland from the stretch. Righty to righty here with Hill at the plate. Career high four RBI in that San Diego game last Friday. That was, that was the tough luck loss of the weekend. 
Yeah, that's the one I want to forget. That one hurt. It was the Noah Hill show on that night. Yes, and ultimately it was. became the home plate umpire show yeah. late. The one to know. Coming to Hill. Shadows lengthen here at Miller Park. On this cool Thursday evening. The third baseman. Second and first not handled cleanly. So the double play not turned. Stu Asu is retired at second. But uh, first baseman Lutz doesn't handle the last leg of that relay. And it'll be Rudder at first, Noah Hill with one gone here at the bottom of the first. It was a double play ball. It just wasn't completed. Yeah, I mean, he had plenty of time, too, with Hill not being a, a, a fast runner. He just sped up a little bit too much and threw it right in the dirt. And that's when they able to hold on to it. Wasn't a great throw by Wyatt Young to the first baseman. Couldn't pick it out of the pebbles and... Runner on first for BYU, one gone here in the bottom of the first. Brock Hale, starting right fielder. Steps in against Stoutland. 4 nothing Waves here, bottom one. Waves getting those four runs on a three-run home run and a solo shot in the top of the first. Stoutland fires for a ball. Nice long look there by the home plate umpire, Billy Hayes. And Stoutland's a guy that'll be fastball, cutter, and then curveball. So he really likes to throw that cutter away to right-handers and get them to roll over or swing and miss. Stoutland's last outing, as that pitch is delivered high and outside for 2-0. His last outing was a 9-inning complete game, 5-2 loss Oh wow! to Santa Clara. Wow. You they know, had, they, They've had three complete games in that staff this year, Pepperdine has, with three separate pitchers. That's impressive. Well, if you're, they're probably all at home, too. Because that is a pitcher's, tough park to get out of, isn't it? It's a pitcher's yeah. ballpark. Uphill into the ocean. As Stoutland delivers to Hale, 2-0, and 3-0. and Everything outside away from Hale here. And so 3-0 count to Brock with Noah Hill on first. from Stoutland. From sun into shadow. That's what he had to do. Just piped it for a strike to 3-1. and one. Well, 3-1 count if you're Brock. You're being really picky here. You need base runners right now down four runs, and you have a really good hitter on deck. But if you get one to hit here, you put a good swing on it up in the air, and good things can happen. Brock with hits in eight of his last nine. Looking at a 3-1 delivery from Christian Stoutland. That's two straight strikes right down the middle after the 3-0 and opening on this at-bat from Stoutland. So to a full count with one gone here in the bottom of the first. 4 nothing Pepperdine meeting BYU. Matt Stelgis at first, Rob Hansen at second, Brandon Vandermeide at third. There are other empires tonight. Again, Billy Hayes is your home plate arbiter. Out of the stretch comes Stoutland. And that's low and walked is Brock Hale. So, first and second now, one gone. Cougars look to make some noise in the bottom of the first after Waves put a four spot up in the top half of the inning, and they're going to have a little conversation. That's a good patient at bat there by Brock. You know, he could have swung at that 3-1 cutter, breaking away, but uh, took it and then got the low 3-2 count to, to walk, which Statlin doesn't walk a lot of guys, I think. I think this is the seventh walk in 30 and 31 innings pitched this year, so he didn't walk a lot of guys. Yeah, he's got a real nice K to walk ratio. 5 to 1 the ratio coming yeah. into tonight. 30 strikeouts to just those six, six bases on balls. Now give him 7 on the year. So first and second for the Cougs here. Trailing at 4 nothing. So they've had the catcher, coach, pitcher conversation at the mound in the interim here as Jackson Clough strides in. First left-handed hitter of the night for BYU Clough, hitting 369 on the year. The team high 37 RBIs in pretty much every major offensive category. Clough's leading it right now. Yeah, he's seeing the ball real well right now. That's the guy you want to see up if you're a Cougar fan. Has reached base safely again in all 30 games of this season. Comes into today on a five-game hit streak and has hits, has hits in 11 of his last 12. So righty-left, lefty matchup here. Stoutland offers to Clough and 
Called strike on the first pitch. 0-1 to Clough with one gone here in the bottom of the first. 4 nothing Pepperdine. BYU first and second. Hill at second. And Hale at first. So the Hill-Hale duo on the base pass for the home side. BYU in the all-whites tonight. Block Y. Blue letters and numerals. Pepperdine road gray pants and orange tops. A step off and Stoutland will reset. Christian Stoutland on the hill for Pepperdine. Making his fourth start and this is tenth appearance of the year. I think all of his starts have been in league play, haven't they? Uh, he actually had... Uh, had starts against Wichita State and Arizona okay. State earlier in okay. the year. Then he then he went to the pen for quite a long stretch where he got those three saves and then came out of it uh, to start against Santa Clara last weekend because Chandler Cooper uh, came out of the rotation with Stoutland going in. Cooper's a fine pitcher, and just yeah. has, and they've for whatever well, reason, he's not the guy right now. Yeah, not so sure if he might be injured or whatnot yeah, because he didn't, actually, the same thing. he didn't throw it all last week or in their midweek yeah. game on Tuesday. So Yeah, Cooper's last outing was in late March. Yeah. And so it's it's been Stoutland since. Lucas and Pendergast, the other two. It's a pretty strong staff they've got. You can go to a guy like Stoutland as your fourth option and have him be as good as he was. 105-pitch complete game last time, as noted. So the 0-2 here to Jackson Clough with one gone here in the bottom of the first. Really just got a battle right here. Put a ball in play. Jackson, bat on his left shoulder. Takes it off. Waves it. And waits. Mm, did he go? He did. So, a half swing strikeout for Jackson Clough. As Stoutland adds to his K total for the year. Now strikeout number 31 for Stoutland. Yeah, not a great at bat right there for Clough. Took a real good fastball strike one, which is fine. And then that last pitch breaking ball just completely fooled him. Bounce at the plate. Austin Deming starting first baseman in for BYU. First and second still. Two gone now here in the bottom of the first. Pepperdine four, BYU no score. Greg Rubel, Tuckett, Slade with you. Tuckett back with me tomorrow. And then former BYU pitcher Scott Haas on the headset with me on Saturday for the final game of this three-game set. Christian Stoutland. Out of the stretch. Kick and fire. And that catches the outside corner. For strike one. 0 and 1 with two gone here in the bottom of the first. Austin Deming. Deming hitting 275 on the year. Yeah, he's really going to that cutter so far this, this inning. He's gone to that a ton the last few batters. Deming's last game at San Diego in that high scoring finale. Went two for five with a couple of runs scored. And five RBI. But it was Jackson Clough's day, right? Yes, it was. <laughs> five five was okay. Jackson was phenomenal. Nine RBIs on the day. And that's laced into the 5-6 hole. And they'll hold Hill at third. So bases loaded with two gone. The cutoff not quite handled cleanly, but it'll stay in the infield. So sharply hit by Deming, and maybe too sharply, as they couldn't send Hill home. And Hill, again, not the fleetest of foot. But it'll be bases loaded with two gone here in the bottom of the first. Yeah, like you said, Hill doesn't run great. And that ball was hit too hard, and the left fielder wasn't playing extremely deep. So you just don't want to get thrown out the plate here when you have a pretty good hitter, McIntyre, behind him. Mitch McIntyre, the aforementioned, steps in, left-handed hitting McIntyre. Was going to be the starting pitcher on Tuesday before that game with Utah got rained out here. So lefty hitter and righty pitcher here with Stoutland facing McIntyre. Two gone here in the bottom of the first. Bases juice for BYU, trailing it 4 nothing. And that's pinged to the second baseman, handled cleanly by Wyatt Young and the throw to Lutz at first and the Siders are tired. BYU did fill the bases but gets nothing across in the bottom of the first. Pepperdine 4 BYU 0 after 1 here on the new skin BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball let's rejoin Greg Rubel. Heading to the top of the second inning here at Miller Park. Justin Lutz at the plate for the Waves starting first baseman hitting just 111 on the year. As Jordan Wood delivers outside, 1-0 to Lutz. Jordan in his first six starts this year, 
seven earned runs against in his last three starts, including tonight, 19 earned runs. As things have uh, flipped for Jordan Wood here in the middle part of this campaign. Right-hander to the left-handed hitting Lutz, and that's to 2-0. and So Lutz is more than happy to look at a couple hitting 111 on the year. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to definitely be patient and get his. And that catches the outside edge of the plate. Two and one to Lutz. One run, one hit, two RBIs on the year. The junior out of Las Vegas. 6'1", 220, and puts all of his 220 into that. Lifts it into deep center field and back on the warning track. Leaping to make the catch is Mitch McIntyre. So one gone here in the top of the second. And that was lifted. And you can see that flag is... Definitely headed that way, stayed in the park. Yeah, it wasn't hit that hard off the bat. I was like, oh, it's a routine out, but it just kept going and going and going, and Mitch had to get all the way to the wall and make that play. So the deep fly by Justin Lutz. Bring the catcher, Mitchell Dixon, to the dish. It was opposite field, fouling it down the first baseline, 0-1. Dixon, also light hitting at 222. The number nine hitter for Coach Rick Hertensteiner. Hertensteiner is fourth season. He's the head coach of the Wave. Spent the previous 17 on the staff. Been Malibu a long time. That's swung and fouled to the left side this time. Into the BYU dugout area. 0-2, so Wood gets ahead of the number nine hitter, Dixon. Here in the top of the second. 4-0 Waves lead BYU. Three-run shot solo shot top of the first to make it four zip. BYU did load the bases bottom one. Didn't get anybody across. And we're sitting at four nothing waves. That's in the pellets outside to one and two with one gone here in the top of the first. A good pitch there by Jordan. 0-2 count. Breaking ball away. See if you can swing and miss. And now you can go to really what you want here. One two to get you try to strike out or ground out. And Dixon rips it into left field. A two-hopper to Nyberg will send it in and a single for Dixon. A good piece of hitting right there. Yep. Fastball that, that would try to go down in under his hands, and he just threw his barrel at it and hit a line drive over third for a one-out single. It's the seventh hit of the year for Mitchell Dixon. Puts him at first. And bring you to the plate at the top of the order, Wyatt Young, starting second baseman. Had a single and scored on that three-run home run in the top of the first. So Wyatt led things off and gets to hit in the second as well. And that's turned on and fouled down the first baseline, 0-1. With one gone here in the top of the second. Well, Wyatt's a scrappy type hitter that can spray the ball a little bit all over the yard. He has really good speed, so it's going to be hard to double him off unless he hits like a hard one hopper at one of the middle infield guys because he can, he can run. Wyatt had an 0 for 5 day Tuesday against Santa Barbara and came back with a single in his first attempt of this game. And he's at first right now. Or he's at the plate right now with Dixon at first and one gone here in the top of the second. One and one now. Wyatt Young out of Honolulu, Hawaii, the freshman. 5 7 buck 60. Started now all 29 games for the Waves. As the right-hander, Wood. Yeah, good gets change a strike up. call, the good one and two. Up. Good, good change up right there. You've talked about how uh, Woody's change can run away from a left-handed hitter. Yeah, it's his best pitch against lefties. He's got the lefty in the batter's box right now and Wyatt Young. Setting up outside his hill for this one and two delivery. And that's the outside of the plate and got him. Kind of a less than emphatic punch out, but yeah, it it's was. a strikeout for Jordan Wood. It'll send Wyatt Young back the dugout and second out for BYU here in the top of the second. Yeah, he definitely went. It's just uh, Billy Hayes just kind of had a late reaction. Maybe he thought maybe it was just yeah. strike two the way that he, he punched him out there. But you'll take it. So second K for Jordan on the day. Runner at first. Two gone here, top of the second. Quincy McAfee. 
And he had a single turn into a double on the error from Hobbs Nyberg in the top of the first and ultimately scored on that three-run home run. So McAfee with a hit in his first at-bat. Now looking at a 1-0 delivery on his second. That's called strike. 1-1 one one to McAfee. McAfee plays with a, uh, the hood of his hoodie hanging to almost the top of his number three on his back. As he steps in against Jordan Wood. One on one with two gone here in the top of the second. Pepperdine four, BYU no score. The Waves four runs on five hits with a BYU error. BYU no runs, one hit, and a Pepperdine error. Both the errors in this game, outfielders. Off speed, swung on a little head of it from McAfee. Ripped down the third baseline foul. One and two with two gone here in the top of the second. Yeah, McAfee tried to lift that ball right there. That was a home run type swing. Got him set up here for breaking ball away for swing and miss if, if Wood can execute the location. McAfee, the Waves' leading hitter for average. At 340 on the year. With Jordan Wood's mound now covered in shadow. His body is in the sunshine. As he fires and gets McAfee to foul off. Stays one and two. First game of a three-game set. Tomorrow at 6, Saturday at 1. And then the long road, 11 straight away from home for BYU. And 15 of the last 18 will be on the road. Road Warriors, <laughs> that's for sure. It's payback for that March. Yeah. It was almost the entire month spent here in the friendly confines. The right-hander, Jordan Wood. The right-handed hitting. McAfee gets out in front of it, and a swinging strikeout. Third K for Jordan as he settles in here a bit. BYU down 4-4-0. Four, four we go to the bottom of the second here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Bottom of the second now for BYU. Keatlin Kringlin at the plate, coming off a 2-for-5 outing in his last game at San Diego. Scored three in that game as BYU won big 17-4. Taking out some frustrations on Saturday afternoon, right? That felt good that day, that's for sure. Christian Stoutland delivers to Kringlin. Hopper to third base, delivery to first, and one gone here in the bottom of the second. Good Sharply, but right at the third baseman. Easy throw, and one done here in the bottom two. Yeah, good play by Modlin. Make the easy out. Hobbs Nyberg. Starting left fielder and BYU's third left-handed hitter of this night comes to the plate with one gone here in the bottom of the second. Hobbs getting his second start of the season and sees a called strike from Stoutland. Yeah, he's a talented freshman with a lot of tools. Can really run. Hobbs hitting 286 on the year. That's high, but catches the corner of the plate, set up 0-2 to Nyberg. A little backdoor cutter right there that just came back just enough. It's the 0-2 to Hobbs. Stoutland with a single strikeout in the first inning. Mm, long look, but to 1-2. and two. Yeah, Same pitch there. He tried to strike Jackson Clough out on and got him. He went right to it to Nyberg 0-2, and good take there. Hobbs won for his last seven at the plate. Looking at the 1-2 and two delivery from Stoutland. And that sent hopping to the first baseman, bobbled to Stoutland, and they got him just in time. So not handled cleanly by Lutz, but covering Stoutland and just a half step ahead of Hobbs Nyberg at first, and two gone here in the bottom of the second. It was close. Yes, it was. He just recovered in time, and the pitcher did a good job of getting there in time. Yeah, yeah close. Hard to tell. I'd like to see that replay again yeah, the, from you, a different you, angle. You could have called him safe without much of an argument, too, I think, on that one. Yes, yeah, that's very close. close. Yeah, that's close. Yeah. So two gone here in the bottom of the second. And Casey Jacobson, the number nine hitter, starting third baseman at the plate. Right-handed hitting Jacobson, right Handed throwing Stoutland, and he delivers outside away from Jacobson for ball one. And Casey's looking to get uh, 
on track. He's two for his last 20. And that's driven high to left field. Going back and looking at the wall and seeing it go over is the left fielder, Cook. It's a home run for Casey Jacobs. That's how you break out a two for 20. Yes, it is. A great swing there. Nine hole got a, a hanging cutter belt high that Casey got under it and just hammered it off the scoreboard. Good swing, Casey. So Casey Jacobs with his first home run of the season, making it four to one. Into the net on the facing of the scoreboard in left field. Yeah, well, it's a big hit because not only can that maybe get him a little bit of confidence, but you crash back, now it's a three-run game, and you just slowly got to chip away at this lead, and you need Wood to go back out there and put up some zeros. So, oh, and then hit by the pitch is Brian Sue, next batter up for BYU. We're still in the second inning now, 4-1, to one, and a hit by pitch will send Sue to first base. Anytime Brian Sue gets hit, around the shoulder head area it always makes me worry i got him right in the right shoulder up by the neck just because he has that seizure syndrome so his head's very delicate and uh thank goodness i didn't get him in the helmet but i got him in the upper shoulder there so stallins hit his fifth batter of this season sue at first with two gone here in the bottom of the second after a couple of ground outs to get this hit, bottom half of the inning underway, Casey Jacobson solo shot to left, his first dinger of the year, and 4-1 to the score. So all the runs here scored tonight on home runs. And that's first pitch strike from Stoutland to Noah Hill. Noah Hill reaching on a fielder's choice in the first inning. Or beg yeah. your pardon, grounding into a fielder's choice that retired Sue in the first. Yeah, big at bat here by Noah, because if he can get Brock up, he becomes a tie-in run and make things a little interesting here in a second. Pitch outside, diving back to first is Sue. The throw in to Lutz from catcher Mitchell Dixon. Sue back safely. One and one with two gone here in the bottom of the second. Pepperdine four and BYU run. One, Pepperdine with a three-run home run and solo home run in the top of the first. And BYU with the Jacobson solo shot in the bottom of the second. So three balls leave the yard, and five runs get scored, and Pepperdine's got four of them, and Noah Hill looks at him one and one with two gone here in the bottom of the second. Sue takes his lead off first. Stoutland out of the stretch. Fouled off by Hill. Shadows cover almost the entire infield now here as we approach dusk. There was rain and snow this morning. It's cleared off. Cool, but no precip. Far cry from Tuesday when it never would stop raining and no, Utah wouldn't. BYU was canceled. No, it wouldn't. So he'll back into the batter's box at one and two from Stoutland. Waves get their four runs on five hits. BYU with its one run on two hits. Each team with an error. Sue off a of first. Off speed, high, 2-2 two two from Stoutland. Greg, he's probably about 80% breaking ball between the curveball and the cutter. He has, hasn't thrown that fastball a ton. He's really pitching off his breaking ball right now. The 2-2 two and two from Stoutland. With Sue on first and BYU down three. Fired in and ripped into center field. It's going to hop in front of the center fielder. And stopping at second is Sue. He's got to get back and does just in time. That throw came in quickly and sharply from the center fielder, Wills. First and second now with two gone. Yeah. Now BYU loaded the bases, bottom one, two out. Ended up getting nothing across. See what they can do here with first and second. Two out in the bottom of the second. Brock Hale at the plate. That was a really good swing there by Noah Hill. A little nervous there on Brian Sue. He ran that bag hard, and, and Wills has a really good arm in center. Tried to back pick him, but uh, not in time. But uh, if he if he throws another backup cutter here like he did to Jacobson, this is going to be a tie ball game. They have the center fielder playing him shaded towards left, so he has a huge right center field gap here. And back to the mound to talk with Stoutland here. This will be an entire defensive conference. 
You know, it's interesting. I've noticed here in the first two innings with Stoutland, he has a lot of antics out on the mound. After every pitch, if you notice, he walks behind the mound, and there's a rosin bag there. He has to tap it. He's kind of like, I don't know if he's a head case. I can't quite figure it out because he has to do something after every pitch, whether he likes it or doesn't like it. It's kind of interesting. You don't see too many pitchers doing that. No, he has to be doing synchronies, though. You're yeah, right. He really yeah. does. And he, even how he just catches the, the yeah. ball back from catcher is yeah. done in a un, kind of unique way. It definitely Away is. Away from his body, he yeah. his glove added a bit. Uh, yeah, some antics. Shows a lot of body language. So, the conference concludes, and Brock Hale will step in. Two gone here in the bottom of the second. Well, this, this game moving along, and it's called a leisurely pace yeah, right now. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> but uh, this is where your stars have to be stars in these situations, right? You have Brock Hale up with Jackson Clough on deck. This is who you want. Hits an eight of his last nine. Reached on a walk in the first. And ooh, over the head of the shortstop who lost it in the sun. And it'll drop into left field and coming around to score is Brian Sue. The shortstop, McAfee, had it all the way until he didn't. Yeah. It was a slow looper, and he looked at it, looked at it, and at the last second kind of ducks to get out of the way. goes over his head, drops in for a hit. And if you notice, look where he's standing. Exactly where he's standing is right in the spot where the sun is still shining there, where the shadows are on the other side to his left or his right. And he didn't see that at all, and it went right over his head for a single. Fortunate break there for the Cougs to now cut this lead in half to a two-run lead, and now you have your hottest hitter up. An unusual RBI yes, it to was. make it 4-2. to two. So Brock Hale with the hit that was lost in the sun, and now we're first and second. As Sue came around to score, and BYU makes it 4-2 to two in the bottom of the second. So Jackson Clough struck out in the first inning. Hill at second, Hale at first. We saw that in the first inning as well. Jackson Clough. Left-handed hitting Clough, right-handed throwing Stoutland. That's inside and gets away from the catcher, catcher Dixon, and advancing a base will be both Hill and Hale. So now second and third, two gone in the bottom of the second. And this actually changes things a little bit. You have the freshman on deck that did have a single in his first at bat, but you have Clough up who's batting 366 with 37 RBIs, and you got two RBIs to tie the game. You have first base open. It'll be interesting to see how they pitch him now. Looked like he just overthrew that fastball and tried to jam it inside, and he couldn't hold on to it. Clough out to extend a little five-game hit streak. Second and third, two gone, bottom of the second. Pepperdine leading it four to two. And that's low and hit the pebbles. Two and oh to Clough. You can be selective now. Yeah, you have to be. But if you get a good pitch to hit in this count, put a drive in and tie this game up. Outfield's playing deep with Brock Speed at second. A single should score two and tie this game. 2-0 to Clough. Kick and fire, and Clough's going to foul it back into the screen left. 2-1 two and one with two gone here in the bottom of the second inning. Pepperdine 4 and BYU 2. Jackson Clough, one of Collegiate Baseball's National Players of the Week. Yeah, and I think that would have been ball three right there. That ball was away. He thought it was going to cut back, and it quite didn't. He just fouled it straight back. Also reigning WCC player of the week. Clough looking at a 2-1 and one now from Christian Stoutland. Stoutland 1-2 and two on the year, an ERA of 2.87 coming in two tonight. That's high and outside, 3-1. and one. Yeah, good take there. It was the same pitch he just fouled back. Good adjustment there, Clough. Have the second, placement, second baseman is playing shallow right field. He's really deep right now. The middle of the field is wide open. They have him playing pole side. Jackson, 21 bases on balls this year, second on the team. Second to Brock Hale's 24 walks, and now 25 after Hale did take a free pass in the first. Three and one to Jackson Clough. Two gone here in the bottom of the second. BYU down two, but runners in scoring position. Second and third for Clough at the plate. The delivery inside and laced down the first baseline well foul. A little bounce 
maybe all the way to the cannon center. Yeah, that was a, uh, <laughs> a, a hanging cutter on the inner half that Clough was just out in front. He hammered that ball, but about a mile foul. Good swing, though. I like a 3-1 swing like that. Come on, glued. Now you're 3-2. Now you battle. Full count with two gone here in the bottom of the second. BYU down two. The Cougars have bounced back from a four-run first inning. Pepperdine scoring four on a couple of home runs, both to right center. BYU in the all-whites. Waves in the gray and orange tonight. A 3-2 delivery to Clough. And that's a single to right center. 1-1 one, one will score. Rockham will be the second to score. We are tied up just like that. BYU allows four in the first, scores four in the second. We're tied at four. Jackson Clough delivers again. Hey, tied ball game, and that's what you want. Your leaders, Brock hits a, a bloop single that's a sun-aided single, and then Clough gets a huge, huge two-out, two-RBI to tie this game up. Good answer. And we have a 4-4 four four ball game. Jackson Clough with RBIs 38 and 39 to lead BYU. Takes his lead off of first. And Austin Deming now to the plate. 4-4, the score. That is a balk, yep. Didn't pause there, Greg. So that's, that's Clough a, will take second. That's a huge balk because now he's in scoring position. And for Stoutland, that's Bach number two on the year. So scoring position with two gone still here in the bottom of the second. 4-4 the score. Pepperdine four in the first. BYU four in the second. Austin Deming singled in the first. Was stranded. Clough leads off second. Stoutland delivers, and that's fouled halfway down the third baseline. 1-1 to Deming with two gone here in the bottom of the second. Both teams with four runs and five hits with an error. I was just looking at the scoreboard and thinking, I, I love when they match like that. It's, <laughs> it's just so interesting. And, and both teams have scored in such different ways tonight. A couple of long balls for the Waves. And one solo shot for BYU, then some manufacturing of runs. And a bit of a tough luck situation as a ball lost in the sun. Did bring one of the runs in for BYU here in the bottom of the second. That delivery is strike to 0-2 now to Austin Deming. So see if Stoutland can get out of this and strand Clough at second. BYU's tied the game at four. Well, I tell you, all with two outs, right? I mean, Casey Jacobson, two outs, nobody on, hits a solo shot, and then it's just yep. clutch hitting after clutch hitting, and this game's tied. This inning began with back-to-back -back ground outs. And since then, it's batters reaching safely and scoring. Shortstop's playing huge in the six hole, Greg. A lot of space open up the middle as Stoutland feigns toward second and will reset and step off the mound. Clough leads off second, Deming at the plate. Two gone for BYU here in the bottom of the second. We've said two gone for quite a while. Yes, we have. I like two out RBIs. Those are my favorite type. Righty righty matchup here. The 0 2. Well outside and reaching across his body to keep that thing from getting away was catcher Mitchell Dixon. 1 and 2 to Deming. You know, two out RBIs, Greg, are just momentum, just gainers and, and killers, right? They're backbreakers for a team when you can put up four runs with two outs. Pepperine thinks they get two quick outs and, hey, we're going to go with a four run lead to the third. But here we are with a chance to take a lead here in the bottom of the second. 1-2 to Deming. Bounces off the chest protector ball. 2-2 two and two with two gone. Those five RBIs that uh, Deming had in that San Diego finale were a career high for Austin. That almost doubled his... I think he, he had more RBIs that day than he did all season before He had before four that. coming into yeah. it, yeah. yeah. Four became nine. And even then, the uh, the five RBIs were the subheading of the day. Yeah. The, oh, by the way, to Jackson Clough's huge day. And Clough with two RBIs here in the bottom of the second to tie the game at four. That's a strikeout. Swinging and missing is Deming. 
And the second K of the day for Stoutland. And the side retired, but not before BYU scores four to square it. 4-4 four, four after two here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Top of the third, Jordan Wood facing Brant Belk. Belk had that three-run home run in the top of the first for Pepperdine as the wave shot out to a 4-0 lead since equaled by BYU. were 4-4 in the top of the third, and Brant Belk takes a strike. Swings at a second. 0-2. Oh, Jordan Wood quickly ahead of Brant Belk. Yeah, good change up right there. You've got to keep the ball down to him. You've seen what happens when you elevate to Brandon. He can leave <laughs> the yard. Belk playing his 11th game, getting his 11th start. For Coach Hertensteiner reaching and poking it foul down the third base line. That's a good battle there by Belk. That's a tough pitch, fastball running away that he just flared his bat out and almost got a double out of it. Just outside that left field boundary, stays 0-2. First batter here of the third inning for the Pepperdine Waves. Pepperdine 7-5 and five in the league, one game back of BYU at 8-4. and four. That One game gap, testament to just how tight things are. Are and may end up being down the stretch here in this league. And Coach Littlewood telling us pregame he's convinced that Pepperdine will be one of those teams in the top four by the end of the year. Yeah, they're talented. They can really play baseball and pitch it. The one and the one and two to Brant Belk. That's nubbed to Wood. Wood's going to handle off the hop, underhand at Deming, and one gone here in the top of the third. Yeah, so Brant Belk is retired. That's a great, great job by Woody. The hardest thing sometimes after you just give up a big-time home run to that guy two innings ago to face him again, you just really got to just shut him down, and he really, really handled that at bat well and really sequenced it great. Matthew Canfer, starting right fielder now at the plate. Singled, was retired on a double play in the first. That's outside from Wood for ball one. 1-0 one with one gone here in the top of the third. 4-4 the score, Pepperdine at BYU. Matthew Canfer, 6'2", 190, senior. Swings and fouls it back, one and one, with one out. A 10-game hit streak that he extended to 11 in the top of the first. Righty-righty matchup, and Wood settles that in for strike two, one and two. Yeah, good slider right there. Wood seems to be able to command his pitches a little bit better than he did here in the first. We really need him to have a bunch of good innings here in a row. Jordan Wood looking for his fourth strikeout. And this is his third inning of work. And there it is. Swing and a miss from Camper on the outside offering. Four Ks for Jordan. That's a big-time strikeout right there because he had him set up perfect and then executed the pitch, fastball running away, and he just couldn't hold off on it. Good location and good spot. Jordan, we've coming into the day with 35 Ks on 49 and two-thirds innings pitched. He's added four more to that season tally. And stepping in is Billy Cook. Billy Cook hit into a 6-4-3 in the first. Two gone here in the third. 4-4 four, four the score. Four hits, five runs, and an error for both Pepperdine and BYU. It's up top. 2-0. With two gone here in the third. Well, you really need to execute right here to Cook because he's got five home runs on the year, and he's the guy that really scares me with this type of wind today. Keep the ball down to him. There's a strike from Jordan Wood. Make it two and one. And Cook is working on that eight-game hit streak. Extended it with uh, a one-of-four performance against Santa Barbara on Tuesday. Remember, I did lose that non-conference midweek game. As back-to-back -back strikes for Wood makes it two and two, the Gauchos got the Waves eight to two in Malibu. Gauchos are good this year; they're really good. I think they're top twenty ranked right now. The two-two swung on and fouled back by Cook. As Tuckett noted earlier in this game, team-high five homers for Billy Cook. He had a walk-off to beat Santa Clara 
last weekend. And that's a no doubter because he hit that just straight to a little bit left center in Malibu, which is almost impossible to hit out there. That's outside for three and two. Two gone here in the third. Base is empty for Pepperdine. 4-4 the score. Pepperdine started this game with a bang. Two home runs in the top of the first. Make it 4 nothing. BYU since answer with four in the bottom of the second. We're now in the third. And we're all square. The right-hander Wood kicks and fires. And that's strikeout number five on the day. And second of this inning. The side retired. And we go to the bottom of the third with the score. Pepperdine 4 and BYU 4 on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. Bottom of the third, and Mitch McIntyre one hops it, and in fact, under the glove of the center fielder, ends up with a stand up double. It appeared the center fielder had a beat on it, and it skipped under his glove. And McIntyre will end up at second. It hit hard. I thought it was going to be a single for sure off the bat. Center fielder of field appeared to feel like he was going to catch that thing on the fly and on the run of the shoe tops, but it skipped under his glove. And it will go as a hit and hit number six of the day for BYU. McIntyre will give him a double as that went under center fielder Corey Will's glove or a single with. It could be a single with an error, possibly. Air. Yeah. Okay. Either way. Give BYU the sixth hit. We'll see how that second base is awarded. McIntyre is at second to lead off the third. Keaton Kringlin. Well, Keaton's a good bunter. He's been called upon a ton this year to have to bunt in these situations. You might see him or coach might give him a swing to see if he can uh, get him over on his own. But the goal here is just get Mitch to third with less than two outs. Kringlin hitting into a 5-3 in the second. Now three for his last 17 at the plate. Runner in scoring position here in the bottom of the third in a 4-4 game. They did give an error. Single with an error on that previous at-bat from McIntyre. So the Waves with two errors and BYU with one here in the bottom of the third in a 4-4 game. Kringlin, right-handed hitting, and Christian Stoutland stays on the hill for the Waves, right-handed throwing. Hobbs and Iberg on deck. Stoutland fires, and that's looped into short right field. It'll drop. McIntyre rounding third, held at third. It'll be first and third with no one gone here in the bottom of the third. Yeah, it wasn't hit hard. Like you said, it was looped just outside the reach of Wyatt Young there at second. And uh, Mitch kind of had to freeze to see if he was caught, so he had to be held up. And with no outs, it's definitely the smart move. And so now you have Nyberg up in a first and third situation with no outs. So back-to-back singles for McIntyre and Kringlin with a center field error in between, sitting at first and third with none out here in the bottom of the third. And Hobbs Nyberg, the left-handed hitter at the plate for BYU, facing the righty Stoutland. Nyberg, a ground out 3-1 in the second. And that was the second of back-to-back ground outs to begin that inning that actually ended up with four runs being scored by BYU, tying the game at four. We are 4-4 in the bottom of the third. Nyberg looks at Stoutland, who sends it down the pipe for a strike. Man, 0 and 1. You called that. He sent that right down the middle. If you're Hobbs, you've got to attack that pitch. So first and third for BYU. Man on the corners and no one gone. So high probability of BYU breaking this four-all tie here in the bottom of the third. And there's a swing and a drive into right field. One run will score. That's McIntyre heading over to third and advancing on the single hit sharply to right is Kringlin. So first and third as Nyberg drives in BYU's fifth run. And the Cougs take a 5-4 lead. Five in a row now for the Cougs. Yeah, got a elevated cutter again. Hits it down the right field line. Good swing there by Nyberg. And King Kringlin on his horse there goes first to third. We're in the same situation here with Casey who really got the rally going last inning. So Hobbs, who was one for his last eight at the plate with a run-scoring single. And still men on the corners and still none out. And now BYU in front by a score of 5-4. to four. Casey Jacobson settles in. Casey off that solo shot that got things going for BYU. One inning ago. 
Cougars are blanked in the first. So far, Par put up five in innings two and three in case he gets into another one. And that is deep left center. And that is, oh, no, oh, God, again! A three-run shot for Casey Jacobson. Second homer of the day, third of his career. A three-run shot, four RBIs of the day for Casey. It was Casey at the bat and Casey going yard again. And it's all BYU 8-4 to the score. Have a day, Casey Jacobson. Comes in here batting a buck, about a buck 40 on the year, maybe a buck 60, and has two home runs and four RBIs. Great swing, Casey Jacobson. In. Wow. That is awesome. I'm happy for that kid. He's worked real hard. I'd love to see that success show. Again, he came into tonight, two for his last 20. He goes two for two with two yard shots and four RBIs to make it eight to four. BYU now doubling up the waves. Waves scored four in the first, BYU four in the second, four more in the third, and still none out here in the bottom of the third. Casey Jacobson had four RBIs on the year. He has four RBIs in two innings worth of work, the second and the third here tonight. Yeah, that's awesome. Coach, he got a couple of starts down in, uh, in San Diego and played really good defensively, had a couple of really good at-bats. And, and Coach said, you know, we're just going to roll him out there and let him do it. And, boy, he's making it pay today. It's awesome. Brian Sue now at the plate. A half bunt look to Stoutland there, two and one. As are three pitches into Sue's at bat, eight to four the score. BYU doubling up the waves now with eight runs scored over the last two innings. Casey Jacobson with two runs scored on two home runs. Those two runs tie his career high. The two home runs in a game, a career high, as he had one for his career coming into tonight. So have his yourself high, a day. Yeah, his high RBI yeah. tally was two for a game, and he's doubled that here early in this game. That's awesome. Good for you, Casey. BYU eight runs on nine hits. A couple of home runs. Well, I remember you telling Casey me uh, in the pregame, we were just talking about the lineup. You said the seven, eight, and nine holes have to have a big day. And so far, you've gotten four hits between those three guys and, what, five RBIs now? That's, yep, with, yeah. the, with the Nyberg RBI giving him five, yep. Sue sharply down the left field line. Foul. Three and two to Brian Sue. Still here in the third as they're going to get up in the Pepperdine bullpen. As to Christian Stoutland's getting knocked around a bit. His last outing was a complete game loss, mind you, but a complete game of work. 105 pitches, and it feels like he's thrown 105 here in the first three innings. Yeah, he's at, what, 53 pitches now. It's up in the zone on Sue. Swings at it and pops it up to second base. Catch is made and first gone here in the third. Yeah, I think Brian uh, swung at ball four right there. So Wyatt Young, the second baseman, retires Sue. One done here in the bottom of the third. Eight to four the score, BYU leading it. BYU was down four nothing before they even took a swing tonight. And since then, eight straight in response. Noah Hill singled in his last at bat. Bunts down the third base line. Coming in hard is Maudlin and retires Noah Hill. The throw to Justin Lutz. Plenty of time and two done here in the bottom of the third. BYU 8-4 to four over Pepperdine. Yeah, good play by Maudlin. He was playing back but got a good read on that. And hard throw. Nice and easy made it look to get that second out. Brock Hale now. Walked in the first. Had that funky RBI in the second, and the ball, the shortstop, lost in the sun. Just a little half looper over his head. Looked like it's funny. The, the way the play was made, it looked like he was just going to eye it into his glove, just yeah. crouching to watch it into his glove, and all of a sudden, at the last instant, he kind of ducks out of the way, and it dropped in for an RBI. Yeah, that's sun. We've seen that so much at this field in the first few innings. It can be brutal. The 1-0 delivery outside, 2-0 now to Brock Hale. Brock now with hits in nine of his last ten. Sees that come inside for 3-0. and oh. So two gone here in the bottom of the third. Three balls, no strikes to Brock Hale. Christian Stoutland's gone all the way, and it's been a long way through three innings. Again, upwards of 60 pitches thrown by Stoutland. 
And that's ball four that gets away from Dixon. And taking his trot to first will be Brock Hale. So Hale has now reached base safely three times in three innings. Yeah, that, you don't see that very often. But uh, when you do see that, it's a good sign because that means you're scoring runs. That's, that was a 60th pitch right there, and we're only through three. You hate to you hate to have your starter have this type of outing because on day one you don't want to bull, uh, waste your bullpen. You have two more games to go. Jackson Clough now stepping in. A two RBI single in his last time at bat. It's BYU is digging its way out of that 4 nothing hole, and they've done that and then some. 8-4 to four the score. Two down here in the bottom of the third. So that Jackson, pitch is low and inside. Ball one. Jackson now has 39 RBIs, correct? Yep. 39 RBIs, and we've only played 31 games now? This, this, is, is, game, 30, this is game number 31. Yeah. Yep. You can't beat that ratio right there. Now, 9 in one game helps. It definitely helps, <laughs> but uh, he was hot before that as well. Yeah, Klaus been uh, good from the jump. Catcher Dixon's going to trot out and have a word with Stoutland. Sometimes you're going to see catchers that are of the uh, shorter and stouter variety, but uh, Dixon, not one of those guys. 6'3", 180 yeah. is the uh, Pepperdine catcher. Tall and skinny. And he looks only about 160. <laughs> Jackson Clough, the lefty hitter, will step in against the righty thrower, Stoutland. 8-4 to four the score. BYU doubling up the waves. Bottom three. Two done. 1-0 and oh to Clough. Leading off of first is Hale. Outside 2-0. Oh. We'll be aggressive right here if you're Clough. You get a pitch elevated, put a hammer to it. The throw back to first. Lutz handles high, not even sweeping on Hale, who dove back in time. 2-0 and to Jackson Clough. Hitting around 370 now for the year is Clough. And that skips to Dixon. 3-0 and to Jackson. So Hale on first, and Clough... With a hitter's pitch forthcoming. We'll see what he chooses to do on a 3 0. Stoutland out of the stretch. Settles and fires and gets Jackson swinging through it. 3 and 1. I love it. Coach gives him 3 0. Gives him a chance to swing. Fastball running away right there, but if he got a hold of that, he, that ball would have been a two run shot. Back to first. Goes the throw and Hale. 3 1 here. This is a situation with, with Clough hitting and Hale running that coach might send Hale here on a 3 1 hit and run. If it's ball four, you take it. If it's a strike, you, you hammer it. Clough waggles the bat off his left shoulder and watches ball four. So first and second with two gone here in the bottom of the third. You know, the interesting stat for me now is that his that's his fourth free bag that he's given up. He's walked three now, and he's hit one guy. So four free bags. Mm. And he came in only giving up, what, six before this? Six walks on the year. Yeah. Four hits batsmen yeah. on the year so, coming I mean, in, too. Not yeah. a, I mean, on our scouting report earlier today, we're talking to hitters about, hey, he's going to be around the zone. Be ready for strikes. And he just hasn't been in the zone as much as we expected. But about one free bag per appearance coming yeah. into tonight, and then four here yeah. in the first three innings Ex of this appearance. Exactly. So first and second for the Cougs. Still in the bottom of the third. BYU still looking to add to a four-run tally here in the third. Four in the second, four in the third. The foul back by Deming. Cougars up eight to four. And so all the scoring numbers are crooked, and they're all fours right now. Four for the Waves in the first. Four for BYU in the second and the third. Hey, you, you really want to make it hurt right here. Those back-to-back -back free bags. If Deming can get a big hit, maybe split a gap with Clough Speed and put up a six spot here. Deming singled in the first, struck out in the second, and he's another guy getting his third at-bat in a third inning. Deming hitting righty. Two on for Deming. Outside away from Deming. One and one with two gone here in the bottom of the third. 
Well, and Deming has a lot of juice, Greg, to right center. He really has power that way. And the way the wind, wind is pushing this year, the, the, I mean tonight, he gets the ball up in the air that way. It's going to be a three-run shot. It's amazing how much power this kid has the opposite field. And the flag stiff into that direction it is breezy. The 1-1 one, one becomes strike two. Deming watching catch that the outside corner. So one and two to Deming. Two gone here in the bottom of the third. Benjamin Slattery is up in the Pepperdine pen. Will this be the last inning of work for uh, Stoutland? Possibly. I mean, you don't. You would like him to try to get at least 100 pitches in, maybe another couple more innings to save your bullpen for the rest of the weekend. But you can't let this game get too far out of hand as well. It's going to be up near 70 through three innings of work. Yeah. Deming looking at a 1-2. Runners on first and second. Hale at second base in scoring position. Stoutland with a glance toward Hale. Comes plateward and a swing and a miss by Deming. A strikeout to end the inning. So Austin Deming is K'd for the second consecutive inning. A swinging strikeout for Deming. Strikeout number three on the day for Stoutland. And after three complete, it is BYU 8 and Pepperdine 4 here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.